Good evening, good evening, and welcome to another segment of the new black leadership here at Can Television. And I hope that this show arrives to find you and your family in the best of health and spirit. We thank Almighty God for another opportunity to get it right, and we really thank Him for blessing us with clarity bless uh, and blessing us really with the spirit uh, and the will and the determination to give back you know to the people so we are really really honored to say the least to try to make a difference here on this planet called earth uh, the new black leadership coalition is comprised of many organizations, individuals who are very progressive here in Chicago and throughout the state, trying to make a difference where it counts. And in that body of individuals, there are men and women that really believe in the liberation, in the salvation of humanity period but our focus have been on poor black people who have been really shut out and as we look at Keith brother Keith my guest that I'm going to introduce very shortly but as we look at the many challenges that we have here uh, we have to make sure that we don't uh, we're not guilty of what a lot of folks have been guilty of and that's not um, doing what we have to do and making sure that every vote, every policy, every legislation, every, every different type of decision, etc., something must be in it for poor black people. Whether you are an economist, politician, a pastor, an educator, or what have you, every decision should be something for the poor. So I'm honored to say the least. We, we, we were scheduled to have Brother Samuel Muhammad, who um, could not be here with us, but he indeed uh, called a, a very uh, well-informed brother, one that I can consider, and I've always considered this brother to be a good friend of mine's, a brother in the struggle who is involved on the west side, Humble Park, etc. Um, this is my brother, Brother Keith Muhammad, who's representing today, yes, sir. representing <clears throat> today uh, our brother, um, the um, um, missionary. Yes, North Star. The North Star United <coughs> Missionary <coughs> Workers of America. That's correct. And uh, a great history, a great, great history of this organization. And so, Brother Keith, I know the man must have called you and you you just stopped what you were doing. Absolutely. I'm so glad, man, that you were Go flexible ahead. enough mm -hmm. to be here. So tell the audience, you know, we were talking before the show and it was some interesting things that you were saying then. I hope we could we could um, talk a bit about those things, but what is North Star? Well, <clears throat> North Star is a um, community-based organization, and again, it primarily um, focuses, as you stated, on those disenfranchised. That's the term that Brother Samuel and I use a lot. Those disenfranchised individuals that society sometimes just push to the wayside. Uh -huh. uh, because a lot of times, as you stated, politicians, uh, those that are creating jobs, uh, those professionals that are in that job creation uh -huh. uh, uh, situation, they're normally talking to the middle class or the working right. class individual. But those that are struggling, that has some issues that are special, those individuals are really never addressed. And so what myself and Brother Samuel in the organization, we really focus on 
making sure that we can reach those people, engage those people, and educate them on the, the necessity to be organized so they can change their conditions themselves and not necessarily totally to look for politicians or others, but to have a platform in which they can speak on and present their platform to those, those individuals and not have those individuals uh, present a platform to them. So, again, the organization is very community-based. We do a lot of mentoring. We do a lot of work on uh, aspect of working with uh, young troubled youth, whether it's through sports or through uh, summer job initiatives, organizing them on an the aspect of uh, being knowledgeable about uh, politics, uh, really focusing on them to obtain their education Great. so they can better themselves. Good, good. That's excellent because those are so many things that we must have active in terms of reaching a mass youth because all of them are not going to be attracted to just one particular area so we need that mass of opportunities and resources Correct. for them um you had mentioned his father mm -hmm. um was a pastor Correct. reverend mitchell absolutely and actually, when um, Dr. King came to Chicago to deal with the aspect of fair housing, he met with uh, Brother Samuel, uh, okay. Father Reverend Mitchell, and he came to the west side of Chicago, which is classified called North Londale. Mm -hmm. Most west side is called the K-Town. Mm -hmm. So he came and dealt with the aspect of slum housing, and he organized and he uh, and worked with some west side ministers, and Brother Samuel, minister, uh, father, was one of the uh, key ministers in that coalition of west side ministers that was dealing with the aspect of fair housing. There was a lot of slum housing at the particular time on the west side, and it still is in some particular communities. So when Dr. King uh, came, he worked uh, with those individuals. And the one thing about Doc, um, excuse me, Brother Samuel's father, he was very diverse. He, he worked with politicians. He worked with the Street Brothers. Actually, the uh, conservative vice lords were formed in uh, the Cape Town of North London area. Okay. And their main mission was community organizing. Of course, they may have some uh, labels that are different now, but the initial beginning okay. of the organization was dealing with community organizing, keeping the community clean. Sort of the same concept as the Black Panthers. So, again, his father was a person that really dealt with the aspect of uh, uh, engaging the community and from a political standpoint. He created jobs. He would bring uh, water millers from the south and have young brothers sell those. And so he provided them opportunity and gave them the understanding of how to be self-employed. So there was a whole comprehensive, uh, holistic approach he took to community organizing. So it just wasn't spiritual based. It also dealt with economics. It also dealt with education. It also dealt with the aspect of understanding the political arena in which you are a part of and to be educated on that to empower yourself. Wow. Faith without works it's is dead. dead. Absolutely. And you had mentioned, too, about the folks who were not aware at this time in 1964 right. about, uh, I'm going to call it welfare, Correct. but people who needed some assistance. Absolutely. And I, I, I wish Brother Samuel was here to tell the story because I, don't, I know I'm going to do some disservice, but okay. when he tells the story, he uh, uh, explains it as his father was in a grocery store one time and uh, a white female was at the counter uh -huh. and she was buying foods with uh, food stamps. And he saw the transaction, uh, uh, you know, going on, and he asked her, "What are those?" And she said, "These are food, food coupons." And he said, okay. "Well, how did you get those?" And she said, "Well, go down to uh, the uh, uh, state welfare department. If you fall under a certain category with X amount of uh, children, you're qualified to receive these federal or state assistance." And at that time. That information wasn't being disseminated to the black community or more than likely in, on the west side. Mm -hmm. So he gathered information and and pushed that effort and, you know, he was getting some pushback. So he organized the community and he did a march down to uh, Springfield with the aspect of providing the same opportunities that other uh, populations were receiving in the United States, that blacks should receive that same uh, type of uh, assistance because right. again it's just your tax dollars or tax dollars that are provided to give you an opportunity to get back on your feet and he knew from the aspect that if, if a person had this 
uh, means of income that will give them the opportunity to get on their feet, especially the aspect of feeding their children because okay. it's all about you know maintaining your household. So once again, he found out about that particular program, then he found out about other programs, and he brought that information uh, back to the community, which is something that again is uh, you know knowledge is, is, is power. So, oh, absolutely. And that was his, uh, main it bless his heart absolutely. because my mother and other mothers who. Uh, was on general assistance. They call it ADC. Mm -hmm. uh, my mother, when we were living in the Robert Taylor homes, and it was a transitional period. You know, right. just to, you know, you don't have a job, you don't, you know, work, you need that, that right, that assistance right. until you were able to get a job. So uh, we need advocates like that today and not so that people can be dependent, as you say. Right. He was promoting do for self. Correct. He was promoting, but in the meantime, if you needed some assistance, here's a program. And today we need more information, more resources while folks are out here struggling. That's why as the New Black Leadership Coalition and, and, and group of individuals, Brother Keith, it's it's paramount to us, paramount, that we are the fighters for our people. And I mean, if you don't have any fight in you and you just want to go along to get along and you know that policy, that, that particular bill, that particular mm -hmm. program, that particular legislation, it does not at all represent that mass of people who always get looked over. No <clears throat> contracts, no projects should go up unless it includes the poor. Right. I don't care nothing. I mean, no matter what, you know, they do that stuff with scatter housing and now you have to have so many people. Uh, what, what do they call that? That if you have a, a, a development People set hood set aside and people uh, have um, vouchers and et cetera from mm -hmm. HUD. They can live among, you know, that's fine. But let, as the brother, uh, Reverend Mitchell did, we got to, we can fend for ourselves. Right. You know, we might need some assistance for a minute. Listen, folks, if you're watching via Facebook Live and I see that you know, the connection is real bad here today in the studio, you could still get this by uh, going to CAN Television, cantv.org slash hotline. And then if you want to call in and, and make some comments at, to Brother Keith right here, uh, I'm not putting Brother Keith on the spot, but he seems to be very prepared nevertheless, you could dial 312-738-1060. That's 312-738-1060. Brother Keith, you have been in the community for a long time, yes. brother. Correct. I mean, you involved with education. You were involved with the CACs. Right. You've been involved. I mean, that's your nature. I mean, I knew you many, many years ago. That's I've known you. But when I look up, I see you in rooms uh, with community organizing. Correct. You are... Uh, the epitome of a community organizer. Right. I mean, I don't know if you refer to yourself as that, yes, but sir. I see you involved. Yes, sir. And one of the things, and, and again, it's the same uh, reflection of uh, North Star and Reverend Mitchell, Brother Samuel's father, is that aspect of collaboration. Because a lot of times we work from this silo where, okay, just the faith-based organizations, we, we're not going to associate ourselves from the political arena. We're not going to associate right. ourselves with non-for-profits. But, uh, and I had an opportunity to work with NCP, the New Communities Program, which was a comprehensive ground-based organization that was funded uh, by the MacArthur Foundation. But the, okay. the thing about that I really liked was the collaboration because we brought all various sectors from the communities 
to be involved in the redevelopment of the community. So you had the uh, education committee, you had a uh, mental health commi uh, uh, committee, you had economic development, job development, uh, we had youth uh, development. So all of us would meet uh, every three months and we would strategize with uh, goals and strategies that we had uh, created ourselves and bullet points in which we were going to try to implement those strategies to better the community. But the key thing about that was mm -hmm. it involved the community. It was from the ground up. It wasn't an organization coming in and done quote unquote some study and said, okay, this is what we think you all should do to better your community. No, it was the community organizers, community uh, faith based organizations, uh, really? teachers, and everyone else that was involved Very in good. that strategy. So, again, and that's something that North Star does. We, myself and Brother Samuel, we work with all aspects of the community because we know that it's necessary for everyone to be involved. The politicians, the faith-based organizations, the non-for-profit, the street organizations, right. for everyone to be involved in order to make a change in our community because those individuals that we are ignoring, now we at a critical mass now and we see the chaos yeah, that has it, ca came about due to the fact that we neglected to deal with the issues that we should have dealt with and we sort of pushed those individuals away because you can run but you can't hide. It's Teach. just a matter of time Teach. for, you know, the reality is going to hit you that, hey, you was trying to ignore them and thinking the problem was going to go away because you say it doesn't affect me. But again, that, that problem is going to creep to your door front. And not all of us are in that situation that we need to come up with something in which we're going to help these individuals. But now we have gotten to the point where it's... It's a chaotic situation. Uh, yeah. It's going to really involve us, but that's what happens in nature. You know, you're forced to the situation. Now we're going to have to deal with it. We can't ignore it anymore. Yeah, and that's unfortunate. That, but everything that you just mentioned, holistically speaking, right, it really covers a servant, a person that considers themselves a servant. And so, when you talk about faith-based organizations, it has to be comprehensive. It has to include all of those components. Right. But that's God. I mean, that's the, the true spirit of a servant where you have housing. It's something to deal with clothing the naked, right. feeding the hungry. So, I mean, giving people opportunities. And I'm telling you, bro, Look, those individuals out there, we should be ashamed of ourselves that we are not looking at resolving this crisis. That, but, but on the flip side of what we see as crisis, Brother mm -hmm. Keith, mm -hmm. is opportunity. That's correct. For us to shine now if we really are the caretakers of the poor. Right, right. And, and, and you know one key thing? The situation has came to a point where in order for us to help those individuals, we have to really sincerely in our heart uh -huh. love them because they have the intuition where they know if you're for real, if you're not. Oh, absolutely. So absolutely. now we are forced to really come with a love that uh, what the, the Bible speaks of, what the Quran speaks of, that actual love that the Christ was about, was an actual true love. It's, it's unconditional. And you see this brother or sister that is down and out, and you really going to have to have some true, sincere love in order to help them, the, those individuals. And you must be that way in order for them to receive because they're not going to allow you to misuse them because we have had situations Man. where organizations have just come up with a program just to obtain funding to better themselves. Say that again. So Say that again. Yes. Too many yes. organizations have came up with schemes. I'm going to say it a little different. <laughs> <laughs> yes. to, to, to really fill their pockets. And the people go empty after that program ends shortly because oftentimes they get in trouble because right. it's not real accountability. Correct. You got to have love. You got to have patience and you got to have understanding man cool. and that's why you know the founder and and I and I and I say this with humility not bragging but I'm thankful 
that we got a minister Michael Muhammad, we got a Siron Smith, we have a Lance Williams, mm -hmm. we got an Enoch Muhammad, yes, we got a T.J. Crawford, we got a Sax Aton preacher, we got a, a, a Kimberly uh, 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 Delaney, we got a Professor Kelly, you know, we got a Keith Muhammad, we got a Johnny Muhammad. I mean, we got a, a, a bunch of folks in here, Brother Obadeli, Bamani, Obadeli. We have a David Peterson. We got all of these folks and more that I miss. And Joe Watkins we had. And we still long live his spirit and Chris Moore. And, you know, we have had these individuals who are really liberators, man. That's correct. You mentioned the Panthers. Right. We got a Fred Hampton Jr. Jr. Yes, sir. You know, we got all of these individuals, man, that I promise you what you just said. They have love, but yet they are practitioners. They are scientific. Right. They understand, man, logic. Mm -hmm. And then they challenge folks now. That's correct. They gonna call a spade a spade. <laughs> Absolutely, and that, you know, and that's what you do too. Yes, yes. well, I have my way. It's uh, I'm sort of a silent assassin, I and mean, I don't. I may not. <laughs> <laughs> First, I show you humility, and then uh, when I need to pull the sword out, I, I will definitely do that. But I, I really like to remind politicians that they work for the people because we're taxpayers, so we're paying your salary. So you're employees of us. You have an obligation based on the fact that you're working for us. And then we vote you in to represent us. So once again, we're paying your salary, and then we are hiring you through the voting process, and you're supposed to represent the community. Well, that's the, and, and, and all of my friends and many of them, I love them. You know, I love them. I respect them. But if you are uh, holding a political office, and you got this office because you doing it just for a salary. Correct. You're not going to be successful. No. You have to come in and you run and you put your name on posters because you really are a servant and you believe that you're a fighter. You want to fight for the people. And that's why sometimes when they hear you know, Minister Michael and myself, and you will say the same thing. We use such words as controversial, right. you know, as as a uh, 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 um, provocative and no uh, radical. No, right. I mean those words. No, but angry, Correct. somewhat angry and disappointed. Yes, and that's why the new Black Leadership Coalition has been born out of a need, brother. That we ain't just doing this because we don't have nothing else to do. Right. Trust me, none of the members of the new black leadership, they all are busy, involved, and doing things. We doing it because there's a void in leadership that's willing to challenge the status quo. And I'm telling you, you can keep thinking that you can go along to get along, Correct. but you're going to always leave people behind because it's the same old ball game, right. man. Right. The have and the have nots. Mm -hmm. 55 cranes up in Chicago. 55 cranes. 55. Yes. What does that mean? Love and it. we got unemployment this doggone high. Right. Absolutely. Yeah, and, and that's something we, you know, we also fight for, like a lot of other uh, community organizers, uh, for those construction jobs, because it's just ironic and it's just crazy, it's uh, insane. You go in a community that's 100% black and you see, lucky oh you see one, God. in most cases you see zero workers out there. Man, that is, oh, you driving me, I, I get pissed. Now, I haven't used any language, bad language today. I've been using the word damn so much. I know my mother's like, boy, I ain't know you cuss like that. But you're going to make me angry. Because when I just know that this is not the way it's supposed to be and we're not fighting, you know, I get angry. Yes. I really, really do, brother. Because I know, I know that we could be doing much better as advocates for the people we, we, we only have maybe 10 minutes or so left. And, I, and there's some announcements, folks. I don't want you to miss these announcements that I'm going to make. Uh, we got them very, very good. I want to make them real quick, and then we're going to come right back. But tomorrow, 
tomorrow. That's uh, February the 23rd, tomorrow, at Chicago State University. Man, you know our brother right here, the attorney Louis Myers, civil rights activist and lawyer, professor in crimin of criminal justice, and um, our brother Fred Hampton Jr. Okay, this is Thursday. This is Thursday. I'm so excited because we got <laughs> two events. Yeah, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you the one. I'm going to come back to that one. This one is tomorrow. Man, the Godfather, they call this man. Yes, sir. Uh, former, uh, 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 first black president of Illinois politics, Emil Jones Sr. And he's going to give a life legacy lesson of the first black Senate President Wednesday, that's tomorrow. Wednesday, February the 22nd. It starts at 6 p.m. Chicago State Library Auditorium, sponsored by the New Black Leadership. The, the Institute for Political Empowerment presents the Political Power Legacy Series. So tomorrow, Chicago State and this brother have a wealth of knowledge and he understands the political landscape because there are many people who would not be where they are if had it not been for Emil Jones Sr. And that's Barack Obama. This is his mentor. This is who he referred to. This who this is the man that got him started. That's right. You know that too. Absolutely. So tomorrow, yeah. folks, go over by Chicago State at 6 p.m at the library auditorium. And then on Thursday, man, this is going to be a, a week filled with information. Our brother, Co, this is the Co and Tell Pro, black history, what we should know about this government and things that have happened to organizations like the Black Panthers and etc. So at Chicago State, on Thursday, February the 23rd, and I think it's from 12.30 to 2 p.m. in the same location, Chicago State, at the Library Auditorium, Attorney Louis Myers, civil rights activist and lawyer, professor, criminal justice uh, professor at Chicago State. He's been here by his lawyer, Minister Farrakhan. Yes. Reverend Jesse Jackson, Al Sharpton, Minister Michael Muhammad, mine's probably yours, yes, the, some of the Black Panthers. He's been, I mean, all kind of icons in black America. Lou has defended them. Right, that's right. That brother. And then, man, the son. I mean, like the embodiment. I mean, he's got to fill some shoes, big shoes, but he's doing it. Fred Hampton Jr., uh, Prisoners of Conscious Community, Black Panthers Party, Cubs. He will be on there with Louis Myers. So that's Thursday, February 23rd. Make sure you get by Chicago State. Now, we got a few minutes <clears throat> left. And I just want to say this, Brother Keith, that you are an example of manhood because you fight. And I know you, you've been very successful in your career. You've done a lot of things. What makes you feel the way you do about community activism and community engagement, parenting, and all of these different components that will make the community healthy? What gives you that? We only have a few minutes, but if you can, in a, in a, in a few seconds or so, what is it that drives you? Well... It's just really, really simple. Um, the love for black people. I'm not anti anything. I'm pro black. And just our history and Sir Jonah here in the wilderness of North America. I'm laughing when you said that because it's funny when we say we not, you know, anti. We never been anti. Right. But everybody knows that there's a problem in the black community, and we don't. We can be unapologetic. Correct. Black to fix what's wrong. And we get along with people. We believe in diversity. Absolutely. The, 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 the 
New Black Leadership Coalition is not some radical organization. It is exactly what our people need right now. And we understand the shoulders that we're standing on. So anyway, folks, I know this time goes by very quick. we got to wrap it up. Yes. But we thank um, CAN Television for uh, giving us another opportunity. We'll see you guys next week, same time, same place. And hopefully we can get this brother back. Yes, sir. Keep you all right with me. Peace and love, and I'll talk with you soon.